Mind Gap Podcast. Everybody, welcome to Mind Gap Podcast. I'm Doug. I'm Justin. And Doug, I got a question for you. How many episodes do you need to give a show before you write it off? I think it depends on the genre. Like anime, you got to give it three or four episodes. You got to. Okay. Anime is definitely one of those things where it's notorious where you're like, I got to see if this is going to vibe or not. And well, especially it's like a someone. Requirement. Like me, who's just like, you, not only do I have to see if it's going to vibe, you like, you got to, you have to hang in there to really just kind of like get acclimated to what the fuck is this? Yeah. Depending on the thing, world? you're like, what are the rules of this universe? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I need to know what the hell is happening. And uh, like one of my favorites, My Hero Academia, like you need to give it a couple of episodes and it just keeps getting better and better and better. And you're okay. like, oh man, this is so cool. But at first you're kind of like, okay, okay. Okay, and you just gotta you gotta roll with it, but then you start getting getting attached to it. There's other things where I'm like, I don't know. I think it probably depends on how long the episodes are too, right? Like if we're sure. talking hour long episodes, I feel like an episode or two. You should probably have a pretty good vibe after the first episode, and then if be like, all right, I'll give it another sure. one. And after that, if you're not into it, unless someone's like, dude, promise, hang into episode three and you'll be good, I might just sort of like waver a little bit. Well, and that's the thing, because there are some shows where I've watched where it I personally don't think it picks up until the second season. Like the second <laughs> season, they find their footing. Like Parks and Rec is a great example. Parks yeah. and Rec, the first the first season is six episodes, and they really didn't find like the writing style, the actors. I mean, everything was there, but like the writers and the actors didn't really like click into like understanding what this world is, who these characters are, how they can play with each other until season two. And I think like by like episode two or three of season two is really where I feel like the train has left the station and you're full steam ahead. Yeah. But it's hard when you're telling someone you're like, you got to get through season one. Now in this instance, season one's only six episodes. So yeah, barrier to entry is a lot lower unless you're, it, it, you know, other network shows, you got to get through 24 full episodes before you really f like, so this is, it's, it's a little different with that example, but I was thinking about this the other day because I was trying to make my way, I'm trying to make my way through Fargo and I'm on season four and season four I am struggling with and it's an anthology yeah. series. So each season is is a different story, different actors, different whatever, all loosely based around the same area, more or less. Season four, I, I'm for whatever reason, I'm really having a hard time getting into, but I keep forcing myself through the next episode and through the next and I'm like, at what point do I just call it? Do at I just point say do you stop and switch on Arcane <laughs> and get ready for season two? You know, how many episodes of Arcane do I give myself nine. then before? No, no okay, yeah, you, you, have to, you have to watch all nine. <laughs> watch all. It nine. really picks up in season two. Have you watched it? It's not out yet, but it really yet, picks up in season really two. Pick. I would say with Arcane, uh, <laughs> two episodes. First two episodes, yeah. you're locked in. Okay. Uh, All right. The first one is great, but it's like, you know, sitting over them. Episode three, at the end of that one, you're like, fucking give me it all, baby. Yeah. Like you just it's does such good and it's it's basically three chapters. You know, okay. episodes one through three, episodes four through six, and then episode seven through nine. It's Got three it. distinct chapters, and you're like, Let's fucking go, man. All right. Let's fucking go. Yeah. So uh yeah, I think it depends. But yeah, I, I'm also like it's I'm also at the point in my life where I'm like, I'm not going to slog through this. Like, I'm not just going to sacrifice my free time to <laughs> see if something's good. I rely on word of mouth so much for sure. certain things if I'm going to give it a try because I'm like, I don't want to spend my time watching shit, you know, when I could be doing something else. You right. know, like Absolutely. free time yeah. is such a luxury that, you know, for me that I'm not just going to throw it away. There's other times, there's sometimes I'm like, fuck it, I'll give it a try, you know, but yeah. it's not going to be like, let's start one piece. This is over a thousand episodes, you know? Right. <laughs> like, no. I remember you telling me about that, and there was another one you were telling me about, and it was just like, this is way too much to, to oh, try yeah. to. Like, it's I almost like one, comic books. You're just like, I hear oh, One I Piece can't. is one of the best shows and mangas of all time, and sure. people are like, don't start it. Right. Like, it's the greatest thing ever, but don't start it. Right. Because it's just, 
so much. It is just so much. And there's a ton of filler in it too. So, which is unfortunate, but like yeah. I hear it's a fantastic, you know, I enjoyed the live action and that was, I forget how many episodes that was, but it was, let's say it was 10 episodes. It covered 60 episodes of the, of the anime. So like, obviously they cut out a lot of bullshit and they were like, here we go. Like they got right. through a lot. So <laughs> great show too, by the way. Um, but yeah, I think, I think you, I think depending on what it is, if it's like, an anime, give it three or four episodes. If it's an hour long show, one or two, and then check I, in and be like, "Is this really what I want?" No, yeah, I, really I agree. Want. If the storytellers can't, because an hour long episode, like you are really like it's a you're fully committing to. You can't just like burn through it. If you like one episode, well, you know, Doug, the way math works, one episode of an hour long episode is two episodes of a shorter one. So that's right. You know, you're really you're really committing yourself to a, a longer viewing experience. So within two episodes of the storytellers. Filmmakers, you know, television makers can't make that work. If they can't hook you, then I think that's going to be what the yeah. the rest of the series is probably going to be. It's going to be season why, four of Fargo for me. That's, I yeah. just can't. That's one of the reasons why I haven't started like Wheel of Time. I hear it's a great, great series, but it's like sure. 18 books. And someone's like, man, around book nine, it starts getting real good. I'm like, I don't, well, I don't so want to do commit you, to that. Have I told you about me trying to read that? I think you have. I've checked it out from the library three times now. Yeah. And I've made it up to chapter six, but it's one of those where it's just, it's for, it, for whatever reason, it's thick. I will say this though, chapter six is really where it started to pick up. <laughs> I just started, started I'm like, I might need to read it again yeah. uh, or check it out again. Because now that I'm in chapter six, I feel like, you know, we're going to, it's about ready to pop off over here. After I watched the show, the the adaptation on Amazon, I went through and started reading the, uh, um, the synopsis on Wikipedia and I just had to stop. Because I'm just like, there's too much happening. I don't know what these words mean. I don't know where well, these for, places are. Like, <laughs> for the when I rented when I so when I checked the book out from the library for the first time, uh, I spent when I cracked it cracked it open. I noticed it in the back. There's a glossary, and so I was mm-hmm. like, well, if I'm gonna jump into a whole new universe, you know, like you and I are are uh, of the nerdy you know variety. So we're used to like, okay, the idea that you you have to get you, yourself into a, a, a new universe. So I'm like, well, let me jump into, I've done this before with different, you know, proper IPs and stuff. So I'm like, let me just jump into the glossary and I'll get a head start on like learning what this universe is about. I spent a full hour perusing the glossary, then started on chapter one and found myself still having to go back to the gloss. Like it is so rich with lore and history. And it's like, it's incredible the world building they've done, but man, is it, it's a thing. <laughs> Getting into it is tough. Understanding the thing. rules of the magic and everything like that. It's a lot to establish to like what's going on in like, right. and then abiding by those rules and everything like that. It's like, oof. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot is to there, get into. Is there any show that you have had where either you has someone has told you you've you've gotta you gotta press on to season like by season two, have has anyone ever given you that that long of a runway? That you need to go, or have you conversely, have you ever given someone like really you hang in there? You told me to there? get through season one of Shit's Creek, and then it gets good. Did you? No. Fair enough. I got through like two episodes, and I'm like, I'm out. I'm done. I'm gonna Wasn't your else. style of humor? Huh? I mean, I don't know. I I I would have liked to have gotten further, but I was just like, I don't know, man. There's times where it's just like it's like overcoming the greatest barrier in the world to sit. I don't want to force myself to sit down and watch something. You know what I mean? Or, or, or like consume something. That's just not good if I'm not in the mood for it, you know? Right. Well, again, your time is precious. Well, it's just, you know, you got to be in the right mood for that sort of stuff. You know, it's taken me years to finally crack open some movies or some piece of material just to finally be like, all right, I'm ready. You know, I'm in the mood for it. Like um, I've been really enjoying the dungeon crawler, Carl series. Okay. One book four. And uh, it's fucking fantastic. I can't recommend it enough. Uh, but Jill, she's not in the mood for it. She's like, okay. I'm looking for something to, to read. I'm like, you should do Dungeon Girl or Carl. She's like, nah, I'm not feeling it. I'm like, fair enough. I get it. I know what you're saying yeah. because you got to be in the right space. It's like watching an A24 <laughs> film, you know, you got to be in the right <laughs> headspace to be like, here we go. Which by right. the way, I watched two of those. <laughs> recently, two more? Uh, because I was on a flight <clears throat> and, uh, I was like, cool. I'm going to watch these two. I watched, I saw the TV glow. And I watched Civil War. So how was I saw the TV glow? It was weird. Well, yes, good. that goes without saying. Yeah, but it was it was not quite I what heard I a, expected. I heard a ton and of buzz about it, which is why I'm wondering. 
And I remember watching the trailer. I'm like, I'm all in for this movie. I love Justice yeah. Smith. I like the vibe of this. I don't know what this is. It's weird. They kind of listed it as a horror. I didn't really catch the horror element of it. But it was also one of those movies where I watched it and I'm like, I feel dumb. I should probably look up. There's there's some text movie. here that I'm not. And getting, I was just yeah. completely like a lot of this was just completely lost on me. I'm like, I feel stupid. Yeah. Like, I, I, just, I was so focused on the obvious things that I was missing than really, honestly, not so subtle things. I'm like, oh, yeah. What? There's a podcast. It just, it's I, one of those movies that just kind of ends and you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> no, okay. yeah. It's it, like, you're like, it ends like in the, in the way I'm assuming that the characters are still going on with whatever's happening, but like you're done following them. Like it, it just kind literally of like, just like stops abruptly. Like, yeah. 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 Not quite as bad as Sopranos, but pretty close. It's just like, bam, <laughs> cut to black. You're like, Oh, we're done. Okay. There's a podcast. Uh, I listened to the director uh, being interviewed on a podcast and it was, it was interesting. That's where I first picked up on like this movie. And I was like, well, that's, Sounds interesting. And so I'll send it to you. I'm curious if you listen to it in hindsight now, if what you've watched, I wonder if anything else clicks for you or if it's yeah. still one of those that you're just like, when I watched, when I read cool. the explainer for it, I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Duh. You're stupid, dog. You're a dumb, dumb. You're a silly goose. We'll um, go back and watch Aliens 3. Fucking silly goose. Uh, Civil War, much more straightforward. <laughs> <laughs> which I also enjoyed that one uh, for different reasons. I was like, when that movie came out, I'm like, I can't do this right now. Not yeah. necessarily in the mood for it, but I'm like, it's good. It's finally out. I want to watch it. It's a great film. I really that one it. I'll, that one I'll be watching this week. I've, I've queued yeah. it up and it's in my, it's, 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 uh, it's in the shallow end of my queue. So I'll, yeah, I'll be watching that very, very, very soon. Actually, I haven't been watching as much. I've been listening to dungeon crawler, Carl. So dungeon okay. crawler, Carl, there we go. I got it out that time. Judge Carl Carl. Carl. Which has been awesome because it's like, cool, new book, 20 hours. I'm like, cool, I'll be listening to this for 20 hours. Can't wait. And I get excited and it's fun. So, I may have missed that. You're, so you're listening to it, not reading it. Correct. Got it. Doug no like if, reading. Let me ask you this. Doug if like listening. Listen to, if you listen to an audiobook, did you read it? <laughs> Ooh. There, now there. Ooh. Let's crack open a can of controversy with that because I know on Book Talk... And Bookstagram, there's all sorts of ideas and thoughts on this. Are, uh, you know what? That doesn't surprise me. Yeah. That sounds and like I was, an Ask Practical Doug question by, pra it, by a Practical Doug. <laughs> it really does. I feel like we need to have a uh, practical. So where, let me ask you this. What's your stance on it? I like feel if you had like. To just sum it up. Give me your, uh, you know, you'll get one minute for closing statements kind of thing. I feel like you're consuming the material. It's the words that are being read by someone else. I still think it counts as reading the book. Got it. Not with your I would eyes, love but with your earballs. I don't like the earballs, but okay, we'll keep going from that. I would Not love to I get heard. chill. According to your I Wikipedia, love you love the earballs. <laughs> I've edited that many times, but it keeps coming back for some reason. That's right. <laughs> I would love to get Jill's and you to debate, Practical Doug and Practical Jill, to debate this topic. I really think this could be a, a hot take. Hot takes. Hot takes. I think we could Speaking crack of, the book, the bookstagram algorithm. That's right. If Speaking of hot takes, if you've got a hot take, let us know in our Discord link in the description down below. You can find it there. Be part of the fa fa part of the family. And uh, if you're listening to this, do us a solid wherever you're listening to this. If you're listening to it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, other places, please review us and rate us. And if you're watching us on YouTube at youtube.com slash podcast, please hit the like button. Please subscribe and please leave us a comment. Just like, what do you think? Do you think listening to audiobooks counts as reading a book? You know, what uh, was the original question we had? Oh, yeah. How many episodes <laughs> should you have? Should you give a show? You know, let us know. Tell us what your thoughts are. We'd love it. It helps us with the algorithm and do us a solid. Share us with your friends. Share us around. Let people know. Help us grow. Everybody wins. Everybody wins. Show. Everybody wins. Everybody also, in the club getting tipsy, too. That's right. Uh, in the description, you'll find links to our Patreon and our merch as well. So go give that a looky-loo and uh, be a hero. Be a Mind Gap hero. We deserve Doug, you. you just got back from a trip. I was in San Francisco. Ha-cha-cha. That's the with, famous... With flowers in your hair? That's the famous San Francisco theme song. That um, is... Yeah, it was actually, um, I really enjoyed it. I didn't think I would. <laughs> I had extremely I, low expectations for San Francisco. Well, from what everyone always talks about when you ask them, oh, how is San Francisco? 
you would think no bueno. But Doug, if anyone, if you know me at all, you'd be like, oh, Doug isn't going to like this place at yeah. all. Like, yeah. Not even a little bit. Um, I enjoyed it more than Seattle. I'm going to say it. I, okay. Say it. That is a hot take. That that deserves yeah. a mind gap hot take drop. I enjoyed it more than Seattle. Now, with the caveat of where I was staying and where I explored was pretty minimal for the most part. I was okay. smushed by the financial district. By the Soma District and by one of the fucking beaches. I think, I don't know, Palm Beach or some shit like that. I was kind of right there in the middle of those three neighborhoods and uh, thoroughly enjoyed walking around that area. I enjoyed walking over by the piers, by the market. I walked all the way up by the Fisherman's Wharf and uh, I walked six miles every morning and it was fucking great. I got to see the sunrise over the fucking bridge, over the bay, and it was fucking dope. And uh, I got to go to some. I went to a Burmese restaurant. Never had Burmese food before. Thoroughly I don't think enjoyed I've that. Ever had Burmese food? No. Uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, so I was pretty central. I was in a hotel that was way too fancy for me. Did not enjoy how fancy it was. Um, one of those places where dudes in top hats man the doors and are like, really? "This way." I'm like, "But I, I'm closer to this door." And now you're making me walk over to that door. Because I feel like if I don't go over that door, I'm an asshole. But this one's closer. And I, all right, I guess I'll go over to that door. It's like, come on, man. You walk in, people are like, hello, sir. Checking in. I'm like, no, I've been here. Do I look like a scrub or something? They're like, okay, enjoy your stay. Welcome back. I'm like, okay. But I'll tell you what. Fucking, my fucking room had a Toto washlet. You familiar with one of those? Hey, what did you just say? A Toto washlet. One of the, a total washlet. I one of the do not best understand bidets what that is. out there on the market, my friend. Oh, Holy I got gotcha. you. Moly, I got gotcha. you. It's the Ask Blaster three thousand, dude. We're talking heated seat, which I didn't know whether or not I would like, because you know you've been in that public restroom before. And you sit down, and it's warm, I, and you're like, oh shit. Un- un- I just settling. missed my quarry. You know, like unsettling. Was like they were just here. Right. <laughs> it's unsettling. Mm. Warm scat. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's like coming into a, a hotel room and like the bed's not made. You're like, fuck, someone's been here. Even though you know people use this, you're right. like, Ugh. I like the idea that everything's been reset. Put on the illusion for me, please. Um, but I sat so- on that thing and I was like, I don't want to leave. This is so cozy. I feel like I took, I'm gonna sleep I took here. a nap. It's- yeah, yeah. Did and you I, have I you used, used a bidet. bidet before? Uh no, not really. So you've never you've never had a run in with a bidet up no. until this point. But I tell you what, that thing. Are you a convert? I mean, I'm all for cleaning off peanut butter with a moist towel versus just smushing it around with a dry piece of toilet paper. Well, is it a moist towel or is it a garden hose? Well, I'll tell you what, garden hose makes a towel wet. Let me tell you that. Boy, that sounds like a I don't... euphemism. <laughs> garden hose <laughs> makes a towel wet. Up top. <laughs> <laughs> Where did we end up? I don't know what we're talking about anymore. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like a sex ed class where the teacher's very uncomfortable with this with the material, and they're just really trying to get through it. <laughs> I sound like I'm in a corporate meeting making up new corporate slang. You know what I mean? <laughs> Guys, we're we jumping look back- on the ground, sitting on the trampoline. You know what I'm saying? Let's get this going. <laughs> All right, let's look back at our Q1 numbers, and you know if you if you uh, if you look at the uh, if you look at the beginning to the end of the quarter. You know, garden hose makes the towel wet. You know what I mean? Like, guys, Q4, I got good news. Garden hose going strong. That towel is wet. Let me hear it. And then you just hear a whole boardroom just clapping. Yeah, people people are like, what the the fuck? I want to go back to double click, you know. I'll dog food. I'll dog food. Take me back to that. Um but have but you? Yeah, so you like, but you'd never used it before, and you're, I never really you, used you, one. Before. You liked it, okay. And so this one was like I've always wild been skeptical because, myself. Well, it's funny because I, I was like, I pushed the button that was like because you can shoot it from the front or you can shoot it from the back. You know, it's you know uh-huh. whatever you need to do. Exactly. So I hit the button Dealer's and I choice. hear it going. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god! It's like, am I going to shoot off this toilet? <laughs> and it was like, you can set the angle and everything. It was it was angled perfectly. Just went boom. Right in, the, right in the butthole. And it was like really hot water <laughs> at first. I was like, oh, oh, I don't know if I oh, like this. Oh, okay. All right. We're getting used to it. We're going around a little bit. I'm like, okay, I'm here for it. Before I know it, an hour had passed. And I'm like, I should probably get out of here. My legs are going numb, you know? It was yeah. great. It was fantastic. And not everyone in the hotel had one of those. You had to be on the higher floors. I just randomly got one. 
So look at Mister uh, Mister uh, Having over here, huh? Yeah, Mister yeah, Lucking Out. Was like that place was far too fancy for me. Yeah. Um, but um, in general, like I really enjoyed the city. It was really nice. Um, weather was great, and what I loved about it was some of the uh, seemingly touristy spots, like the market. Um, which I thought would be like, oh, this is going to just be riddled with panhandlers and everything like that. It wasn't. And local residents were using it like because they'd get off the ferry because they commute and they'd right. stop by the shops. They had like cool little boutiques where you can get some groceries. That's pretty you bad. Get some ice cream. They had all sorts of stuff like, cool. um, you know, uh, olive oil. And there was a bakery in there and all sorts of stuff. And I'm like, oh, shit, like real San Franciscans are using this. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. Like, yeah. You know, unlike Navy Pier, Chicago, we're like, nobody's going there. Like, who lives in Chicago? There's no reason to. Where's this? I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Now, if I had gone to the Fisherman's Wharf during the day and not six in the morning when I was walking, I'm sure there's a Ferris wheel. There's a Hard Rock Cafe, which right. is almost like a Bubba Gump's. So, you know, probably more touristy over there than, uh, you know, average. Did you venture but- into the city, like like downtown or past like hey, the Haight-Ashbury area? or I did get over to, because I did meet up with an old buddy of mine, Mr. Tony Hobbs, a uh, college buddy of mine. Nice. Uh, some of you may know him as Water Speech on uh, Twitch. He would pop in from time to time and chat with us. Uh, he lives in that area, and he uh, I met up with him. He took me to uh, a beatnik area where like Jack Kerouac used to hang out. And uh, we went to a little bar over there, and then we went to a, a park over there, and uh, it was just like, wow, there's real people just hanging out here, just living their lives. There's mm-hmm. something about like just mixing in with the locals where you're like, yeah. Oh, this, so this is what life is like, you know? Right. And, if, if I were to live here, this is a slice of what you know what day to day could be. I was talking with him. I was talking with Tony. I go, hey man, like, yeah. Uh, there's well, first thing you think of when you think of San Francisco is homeless people shitting everywhere. Like that's honestly what a you know. million percent and uh, Full House. And, and yeah, and Full House exactly. If I said yeah and pulling out, I'm like, mm, I don't really think about that. But okay, um, you know, who knows? Uh, but he, I was like, what? And I go also, I don't see any people like aggressively panhandling. Is oh yeah, they don't allow that here. He goes, Chicago is like way worse. I'm like, oh, yeah, you walk into Chicago, like the hustle is on. People are stopping, stopping you, trying to get, either get you to sign something or trying to aggressively sell you a streetwise or someone's going to try and shine your shoes. Oh, and yeah. uh, all of it's, uh, hey, do you have a cigarette? <laughs> do you have a light? There's always something going on where I need to get 20 bucks to get on the metro to go back to Indiana. There's always something going on. Did not happen in, in, in San Francisco. Definitely some like, you know, Unsettling homeless folks, but you know, uh, I also was aggressively told by my coworkers <laughs> that I have male privilege and that I could go out and walk uh, <laughs> by myself Agreed. with headphones in. <laughs> right? I was like, yes, that's that not is... lost on me. I showed them pictures of the bridge at like you know at dawn. They're like, "Oh, male privilege! Look at him walking out when it's dark, getting to take pictures." I'm like, "I know, I know, I know. I do I know. this for all of us." Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i i really thought it was cool it was nice just like peeking ah. down like a, a street and you just see like a completely different neighborhood i don't know it was really cool i like the character the prices can go fuck themselves that, that, that the prices of that place are fucking real one and million percent yes holy moly i got a delicious detroit style pizza that had six pieces for 30 fucking bucks I was like, God damn. And then when I went out with Tony, we got a pizza at a really great place called Capo's. We got a uh, a pan pizza. It was like Pequod's style pizza. 45 bucks for six pieces. Now, granted, it was fucking huge and we got full, but I'm like, 45 bucks? Yeah. Ah, but we also got the, it was a happy hour. We got two meatballs for $6. Two meatballs Six dollars. That's what you call a fucking deal, my friend. Two fucking meatballs at Capo sitting in the booth. You're looking at things of Al Capone and other of those fucking goombas, and you're like, hey, I'm living like the best of them. But for only five dollars for a pizza? God damn, brother. <laughs> Did you guys eat? Uh, I don't know the where I cafe- went there, but I'm glad I went there. You know, I am. It was a journey, and you took us all on it, and that's mm-hmm. a fact. Did you guys eat at the cafeteria in Alcatraz? 
No. I think yeah, because they got. Alcatraz. You want to talk about the meatballs over there? Yeah, fucking yeah, meatballs. Cool fucking meatballs. Fucking meatballs. Did you were you able to see it across the uh, across the bay? Oh yeah. You're like, oh look, Alcatraz, like, cool. The, like, look the at Rock. That. People used to just be stuck over there, right? How weird to be like, hey, a movie I'm ferrying about that. to and from work. What's up, prisoners? You know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, like, I yeah. was just looking on the map here, so it lo- it looked like the the uh, cornerstone of like the beat movement it was North Beach is where mm-hmm. you might have gone with him. Uh, it's a it's a twenty one minute ride away from Hate Ashbury, where it, that's kind of like the cornerstone of like the hippie movement and like mm-hmm. where like free love and all that kind of shit was. Free um, love. Uh. So you and I had a very different experience in uh, uh. in San Francisco. Yeah, uh, if you I made were to it go. Over- Kind of in apparently the Telegraph Hill neighborhood and Telegraph Hill. just north of north and uh west of Chinatown, it appears like. Yes, okay. It was near Chinatown. I thought I saw Chinatown. That's cool. Yeah, Chinatown is unmissable in San Francisco. They've got a yeah, very cool. I, t- I looked down, yeah. I was like, Oh, look at those cool Chinese lanterns. Those are awesome. Yeah. So yeah, I was definitely, I think, in a well, pretty glad- uh Pretty I'm glad you had area a of town. Good experience. Yeah. Like I said, I, I was very disappointed when I went in just everything that I had saw. Now, I did not spend as much time as you did there, so I didn't have the chance to explore as much as you. But uh, yeah, definitely, definitely two very different experiences. But I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thanks, man. Yeah, I was glad, glad too, because I was kind of like, eh, I don't know how But I to your point, this. the prices can go fuck themselves. Yeah, the prices can I've, get fucked, man. Like, I've heard like tales about people like, who make like six figures and there's like five people sharing like a two bedroom apartment or some shit. Like they yeah, got bunk, dude, your money bunk doesn't beds go fucking, and no, it doesn't go anywhere like if you're at all making $200,000 a year or something like that. You shouldn't need fucking roommates. That's ridiculous. Yeah. I will say also, I did like the architecture and I did like the parks and stuff that they had there as gross and corporate as corporate as it was. Salesforce had a park slash garden that's okay. connected to their building and <clears throat> uh, it's four stories up and it's fucking awesome. Like, cool. It's like a big oval, and they've got gardens up there. They've got an amphitheater. They've got a fucking beer garden, and Look, they got a little tech, play area. Techville, for kids. USA, over there, man. And I was just like, God damn, this place is fucking awesome. Um, yeah, it's really, really cool. I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm here for it. It's like I hate that it's Salesforce, but hey, here we go. You know. Well, I mean, that's where uh, I don't remember if it was you. I think it might have been Volucci when we talked about it. But uh, the uh, the tech bros who wanted to. Uh, kind of secede from the from the union and have their own make the make their shirts. own like Gestapo the gray shirts yeah you were you were in the middle of it man so it'll be a little utopia if they if they decide to do that it's very pretty over there very pretty they have a lot of money but they're fucking stupid so that's what <laughs> that's all I'm going to say about that I used to be like oh they're wealthy they must have done something very smart no not necessarily they not when you pay 30 bucks and be stupid it's yeah not possible. when you pay 30 40 you bucks for six pieces of pizza yeah right fuck that shit Fuck it. Fuck it twice. Fuck it. Fuck it, Fuck it twice. All right. Now let's turn our attention to something super interesting. Something super unique and something I didn't know was a thing. And hopefully you, dear listener, will now be as educated as I have been. Thanks to Justin finding this article by the AP saying Germany's first hobby horsing championship gallops through Frankfurt. Now, you Doug, might be I... asking yourself, Doug, what are you talking about? What's hobby horsing? Well, I'm about to fucking tell you. Imagine. And I think is for the record, is this only for ladies? I don't or is believe it just so. that ladies are doing it. <laughs> I just oh, wait, think there's a blurry picture of me. I don't know. I can't tell. But hold on. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, no, it is. You know, I do only see uh, females in this. Uh, I don't it needs whatever. And this can be anybody's stuff. All right, anybody can do this. But, but primarily- you know what? Yeah, no, we're, we're not taking this away from anyone. Oh, you know what? I'll say. Here, here's the thing, though. Uh, it has been credited with highlighting female empowerment for enthusiasts. So I there do think go. it is. I do think it is more female centric. We'll say. Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to. I'm going to share on this one because I think it's really important because I don't think my words or your words are going to be enough for this. So I agree. here's what we're looking at here. Uh, so hobby horsing uh, is basically um, sort of like gymnastics and also other equestrian elements. 
think gymnastics but, is being very generous, but yes. But you hold a, a horse head on a stick while you do it. Um, we all remember those. Yes. Those from when we were younger, images like you said, of them yeah. here as they uh, do do some stuff here. Um, this this apparently this young lady is doing a dressage event. I'd like to point horse. out uh, the angle of her ankles and how her feet are pointed. She's really yeah. got great form. Yes, she's she's committing. She's committing to the bit. We've got like the hobby horses over here that people can buy. You've got is that this... is that the horses in their stable? Yeah, uh, yeah, they're so <laughs> they're in their stable. We've got uh, clearing the bar. You know, mm-hmm. uh, we've got more dressage. We've got, you know, more clearing the bar with the hobby horse. Um, I will yeah, say so- when they clear the bar, both of those photos, there seems to be a uh, standard form to clear the bar. Yes and no. Front, I don't know. Front leg kind of turned up and in, held horizontally in the back leg bent back. Like, I think, I, I feel like that seems to be maybe a standardized jump. If you will, I, I guess. I mean, how else are you going to do that? You probably could to keep the horse because the horse has to stay between your legs. You know, I just don't think it's that heavy. I think you can hold it. <laughs> no, I'm just thinking like awkwardly. You got to have that. You can't like hold the stick out like you're. You know, you have a horse head on a pike. You know, it's got to be between your legs. You know, <laughs> like you would if you were fighting the emus. You would have an emu head on a you pike. You like oh, jumping I it. Ah! Ah! Right? I'm clearing your battlements and For your the humans. <laughs> your and dressage is you just dangling the head around like ha 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 ha. <laughs> floppy neck. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're just listening, I mean, really what this looks like, it's it's a horse play toy horse head with a long wooden stick, and people put it between the legs and they hop around doing horse stuff. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's they're considering it a sport. Doug, how do you feel about that? Oh, it's tough. It's really tough. <laughs> uh, it's really tough to call it a sport. Um, there is some athletic ability with it, right? So um, you have to. Be you know what's jump. sad? It's probably more of a sport than bowling. <laughs> I, you know what? I'm not going to disagree with that in the right? slightest. Yeah, I, I mean, will not disagree with that. Listen, I mean, this takes a lot of hard work. I think in a lot of ways. Um, I, yeah, we bring this up not to yuck anyone's yum. Like this, no. if if like these people are having ge- like genuinely look like there is pure joy in their faces when they're as they're doing this, and so more power to them. I just I saw this and I went, there is literally a thing for anyone's interests. Like whatever yeah. your interest is, there is a thing out there for it. I this is this blew my mind that there was an actual organization dedicated to this and in this article that they're going over they're saying roughly 300 riders are expected to canter around the gymnasium over the two-day event like it blows my mind i'm sorry, I'm sorry. canter around the gymnasium this, whoever wrote this Ooh, uh, uh, they have someone designed to clean up the poop <laughs> as they obviously are you allowed well compete. that's another question are you allowed to just dump if you want to just and like, just say hold on Paused. Uh oh, that's points off dressage. Uh, that's, that's Mika is unfortunately pooping again during, <laughs> during her dressage event. <laughs> off the side, you're like, Garko Donna, no poopy. You must do that in the pooping house. And Flawless German accent. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, yeah, listen, everything about this is fine. <laughs> Except for me, it's the it's the toy horse. Like anything else about this, like it, what it is? It's like gymnastics. It's dancing, and it's totally like well, it's, I'm like I'm on. It's board. gymnastics meets track and field, right? You're clearing hurdles. Right. You're right. like there's there's it's it is it's it's the floor routine or the dancing element of the floor routine and gymnastics. Like there are elements of Olympic sports in this, but then you yeah. just put a, you put a. I mean, fuck! Like we talked about that girl and like her form and everything like that. I mean, she looks like a ballerina. You know what genuinely, I mean? Like, genuinely. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's so cool. But the fact that you just are like, Boop, I got a horse head here. I'm like, I, that immediately, I'm like, oh, so what are we doing? I got, a lot, I got a lot of questions about this, though. Like, are there rules? So, like, with lacrosse, <clears throat> as you've got the, the ball in your, in your net, you've got to continually, like, move it back and forth. Right. Like, that always has to be going. Like, so are there – I really want to know, like, what are the rules? Like, do you have to – is there a stride? Is there a gallop you have to do? Can you just run? Is there like, do you, and I, I this is going to sound like a stupid question. Like, do you make sounds? Are there sounds involved? Like, do you treat the horse as if it's real 
or are we treating this as it is a toy horse? I very much, it's a genuine ask. It's a genuine ask. Well, I'm looking up some rules according to the British Hobby Horse Association. I um, love that riding that's a helmets, thing. Riding helmets are not required, but are strongly encouraged for jumping classes. Okay. <laughs> Ah, okay. okay. Competitors okay. may be disqualified or excused. Oh, this is from their class for dismounting. <laughs> what does that mean? Just like, oops, the, it fell out. The, the horse came out from between my legs. <laughs> dismounting, exceeding the time limit allowed. Uh, excessive jumping faults, being off course, and refusals. I don't know what a refusal is. <laughs> like if the horse no, I'm not doing that. You're disqualified. <laughs> it's, I, I wanted... So. I'm sorry, uh, your judgeship. I was trying to approach the jump, but the horse wouldn't cooperate. Read the entire dressage rule book here. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. How many pages is what you're about to open? Oh, there's. did you know there are two sizes for dressage arenas? Oh, boy. Smaller is there a standard? One for lower level dressage tests and the larger one for higher level tests? Oh, my. Is there a standard horse? Like stick and everything? No, you can do the walk, which resembles human walk. I'm so glad it resembles human walk. At least one foot is touching the ground at all times. There's no flight between steps. The stride is the basis of the basic gates and the most natural movement. There's the medium walk, the collected walk, the extended walk, the free walk. Then you've had the trot, which resembles human jogging or running. I'm like, of course it does. They're humans <laughs> doing this. But like the working here's trot, the, the collected trot, medium trot, and the extended trot. Right. And then you have the canter. Ooh, must have a distinct rhythm and flight. Ooh, oh my goodness. And I'm look, it's we're two people who have done improv, play D D, uh, like no problem with make em ups and 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 committing to something, you know, where you're like, I okay, today you're gonna commit to being a, you know, a a, a paladin, you know, whatever, or a, a, a hey, <laughs> or I an D &D, ogre, man. right? I'm, I'm just yeah. saying, like, we're, like, no no stranger to that. So, like, I genuinely... So, if people are doing this, are you committing to, like, is this, a, is this a horse between your legs? Are you committing to the bit? How hard are you committing to this? Because I would argue that the harder someone commits to this, the more I would, like, the more I'm into that person's corner. If you go into this and you're just, if you're saying, like, oh, it's a play horse between my legs, I'm not into it. But if you commit to this and you're riding a horse... And you and the horse are one. I tell you what, you just you just gained your next fan. Yeah, hobby horsing. Because that's the thing. Like I love it's it. It's like anything. It's like with improv, right? Like if you're gonna come in, you gotta commit. You have to commit. That's what like, I'm you saying. Can't, you can't. You can't do it half ass. You gotta be like, I am in this scene doing this thing. Because if you if you waver even a little bit, everyone knows. Everyone knows you're unsure. Yeah. You're not confident. You're losing. It just it doesn't it doesn't work. So. Yeah, this is the first time I'm seeing this. It's like when people are like, you know, hey, man, fucking Quidditch is a sport. I'm like, that's not real. That's that's a, that's a fake sport from a fictional uh, fictional universe. Yeah. It's created by a now pretty awful woman. But when people are like, no, 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 we put a league together. And I'm like, huh? And I watched a whole documentary about it. And I was like, you know, it's cool because there's certain elements of it. I'm like, I mean, that's kind of fun. You basically can kind of beat yeah. the shit out of each other. <laughs> um, which is wild, right? But then again, there's always something. It's like, so how do we do the golden snitch? Oh, we'll have one guy be the snitch. What? Oh yeah, we'll have one guy dress up in yellow and he will run around the campus, and the uh, seekers will have to try and catch him. I'm like, what? <laughs> That's wild. And while you're on the while you're on the Quidditch pitch, you have to put a fucking broomstick between your legs and run around. Hobby horsing. I'm like, <laughs> oh, like it, uh, kudos to well, imagination. Doug, they can't fly. No. So what else are you supposed to do they with the They can't, broom? Justin. They also can't expect to patronum all the bad spirits away. Okay. That's like, not part of the Quidditch, Doug. You're just you're bringing in random Potter things. When the Dementors tried to suck away his life force. Huh? Think about that. You're right. Justin. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. Yeah. The prisoner of Azkaban. You ever think about that? Yeah, read um, a book, Justin. Read a read specifically book. that Actually, one. Don't read those. You're fine. You're fine. Don't give her any more ideas. Um, uh, yeah. So I don't know. I struggle with that because and you know what? I'm sure every sport starts out that way too, right? 
baseball. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Right. You know, golf. Jugger. You know, jugger. You know, football. You know, like weird. You know, soccer to some degree. Hell, I mean, you watch uh, fucking rugby. You're like, what are we doing? I don't know, man. This seems oh. cool, but what the fuck is happening? I'm 90% sure rugby players don't know what they're doing. Yeah. I think like, it's just right, a free for all. Put your arms around each other. All right, ready? Go! Push! push. And then the ball squirts out. They're like, now we go get the ball. But now I got to throw it. There goes the ball. And it's like, what? And he's running. And he just pushed that guy's face into the dirt. I don't know right. what's happening. You know? Um, I'll so say all that stuff, if you're not familiar with it, is weird. Cricket is a mystery to me. Um, the fact yes. that it can be played for five days, don't understand. Right. But I'll say this much. If hobby horsing ends up in the Olympics, I'm going to have a really hard time with that. I'm going to have a really hard time because I already have a hard enough time with equestrian stuff as it is. Being in the Olympics, and then you're going to have someone who's like, hello. And they're like, oh, I see you ride as well. Nice to meet you. Whoa, careful. My horse is in heat. I don't think they should be together. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Last time that happened, oh, I got a whole litter of horses. I got foals for days. Can't have that happen. She's in pristine shape. And one day, I'm, I've got another one I'm going to put out to stud one of these days. You know what I'm talking about. Ha <laughs> ha. Click your heels. See you later now. You just have someone like Monty Python falling with coconuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Last time. And I say this is your All these foals, it was just uh, toothpicks everywhere. Yeah, little right. tiny, yeah, with tiny little horse heads on it. <laughs> His mind's like, my dad broke it into splinters. <laughs> oh, the foals. Um, I say this with Jess just because, like, again, I don't understand it. And if this was something now that was into. Oh, that would be amazing. I just had a I moment where I'm like, I'd be cool with it. I'm like, would I be cool with it? I, I would know. love for that to happen. I pray to the whatever above that it happens. That'd be amazing. Oh. That would be amazing. Uh, you know, here's the thing. If, if uh, breaking can uh, become an Olympic sport, if all these uh, new ones that came in can be an Olympic sport and uh, DJ Ray Gun or whatever the fucker name was can yeah. can, uh, can do it. DJ Lion, Liar Pants, you know. Why can't hobby horsing become an Olympic sport? I'm just saying Anything's don't count possible, it out, Doug. Man. Don't count it out. We now, here's what I will. We live in a world that makes perfect sense, as we were saying before we started it's... recording, right? Everything makes sense now. We so. live in a world. Uh, we live in a world. <laughs> Hard stop. I will propose this. Uh -huh. So we're already thinking forward to the audience. We're already thinking forward to our uh, 500th episode. Right? I just got we're really already, worried. Continue. Yep, you should be. So <laughs> Noah has proposed uh, a fun competition. I feel like the 500th episode needs to be it needs to be a uh, an amalgamation of everything that has been discussed or brought up or silliness that has happened on the, like we need to revisit a bunch of it and bring some of the stuff that we've talked about ethereally like this into reality. And so I think that in addition to what Noah has proposed, I do think Doug and I have a hobby horse in course. And I think we, we compete with each other and we set up little, they could be short. We don't need to look, we're 41. We don't need to, you know, by the, by that time we'll be 42. We don't need to challenge ourselves that much. You know, we don't need to, we don't need to be setting any PRs for hobby horsing, but I think it'd be fun to, to do a little hobby horse uh, course and uh, give, a, give a little race to each other. And Here's that could be thing. one of many things that we do. Here's the thing. Prattle yeah. Doug is like, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. You know what I mean? Like as, as two, two of like a bunch of young women are really into this, and yeah. I don't want to belittle. We're what not belittling doing. that. We're making we ourselves will not look intentionally like do it, but it will come off as that way. As no. these two no, forty-two-year-old we're... guys are like, we're making fun of ourselves ah! if nothing else. Hey, this that's is about what it female is. empowerment. That's this is like, you know, here we are, two dudes just right. Being like, so let's show how bad the guys are at it, and yeah. how good that they are. At I'm it. sure that's how it'll be interpreted. I'm sure we'll be celebrating it through our failure. I'm Whatever. Sure that's exactly We're doing it. That's it. <laughs> We're doing it. You worry too We're much. It. We're doing it. I have no it. problem it's all in good fun. riding a hobby horse. I mean, that's no problem to me. I mean, at all. Besides, I we say we do it in the retention pond out me. back. I say we do I mean, it in the, where all of your neighbors can see. We do it right out uh, back in the retention we pond. We have the perfect place for it. It's the detention pond. Yeah. Or re <laughs> detention pond? Yeah. I thought it was retention. I Fucking, said it wrong. God damn it. You you have a house now. You have to know these things. You I have don't a have lawn a... now. You have to double know these things. There's no there's no tension pond behind me. 
re or no D. <laughs> there's no re or D tension pond behind me. Well, you need to know where that water there's goes. There's an alley. Yeah, there's an alley. <laughs> Where all the good stuff happens. Where all the good stuff happens. That's where I get my medication. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's where all the poop goes. That's where the poop goes, Doug. I don't know where you poop. Mine you just throw, I don't know, when you pick up Loki's poop and, and Bruno's poop, what do you do with it? I pick up Abby and Benny's poop. I throw it over the fence and it's not yeah. there when I look next time. <laughs> yeah. So it just, that's the poop fence. Magically disappears, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I do, do I question it? It's nature. That's right. <laughs> so what I'm saying I don't that is to universe. say, hobby horsing. Hobby horsing. We're doing it for 500, okay? We're going to have a big... I think 500 needs to be a big blowout. We need to start planning it now. I think it'd be cool. I'd love to do a part where we hop in for some jugger matches, you know? That'd be, That'd be cool. amazing. Yes, let's put that on the list too. 100%. Yeah. We're going to start... You know what? Here's the thing. In the Discord, we're going to start planning this out now we maybe we make a special channel for the 500th yeah and we we start getting we start crowdsourcing ideas from the community and if you're listening and you would love to throw an idea out there for us to do a challenge that you would like to see us do throw it out there join the discord and and throw it out there i think we can make the 500 a really really spectacularly stupid event that could be fun yeah it could be a multi-episode thing absolutely yeah or one giant episode one giant. We episode. could learn to play cricket and it could be a five day long episode. Oh God, please no. <laughs> I don't, do that. don't even joke about it. I, I don't so, want to do that. I don't want that to do it. Be very much fun. Um, <laughs> well, should we just, uh, should we just head to the game? I think it's time for a game, Doug. Let's do it, man. I think it's time Let's for a in. game. It's, uh, I still don't have a, uh, uh, that's it. We're playing three, three and six. We're playing quarter dozen and half dozen. So, Doug, uh, I know. Uh, so, this is the game. Uh, we played it uh, first time we played it was with Doug. Then Sam and I played it last week. And then, uh, you know, Doug and I played it again this week because it's a fun game. Um, Queen quick shout six. out to I, Sam. Thanks for hopping in, bud. Right? Appreciate you. Sam did a Good great job. We had a wonderful time last week um, on that episode. Sam regaled us with the legend of the Comic-Con hot dog bandit. And it was ah. it was something. I'll tell you what. It was something to behold. Nice. So three and six, I'm going to give Doug a, uh, a, um, a prompt. And he has to give me three things that relate to that prompt within six seconds. Okay. So uh, in past ones was uh, name me three fruits that start with the letter A. And that was a Doug had six seconds that to try trick, to do that. It was a trick one. It was a trick one. So, and I told you each time I do this with you, I'm going to have a different counter. So I have a new six second counter designed specifically to increase your anxiety as you're trying to answer these. Now, remember the rules are once I finish reading the question, I will not be going back and, uh, and uh, clarifying anything. So take the question for however you want it and just, you know, lock and load right oh, there. I'm going to take so, it. You're going to take it? You're going to take it hard? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. cool. Doug, you ready to play three and six? Yeah. Here we go. <clears throat> Doug, name three popular TV shows from the 90s. Full House, Friends, Seinfeld. Oh, man. <laughs> what, what, what happened? I blacked out. This what guy. Was going on? This guy did it. I truly thought that the 90s were going to throw you. Uh, uh, yeah, for a loop. I tested yeah. this on Haig and he said the 90s because he's like, that was marriage two or three. I don't know what it was. And he's like, the 90s were a lost decade on me. He goes, a lot of shit happened in the 90s. So uh, yeah, he's, he's still not, catching not up on popular music from the 90s. Yeah. So if you've got any recommendations for him. Yeah. Well done, Doug. OK, like so uh, Douglas, here we go. Next one. List three types of alcoholic beverages. Uh, tequila. Heineken and uh, the, the fireball. Sorry. No. I don't think you got it in in time. You said the, what are you the, talking the, about? I got it in. Did you not hear the scratch? The record yeah, scratch? Yeah, after I got it in. Ooh, I don't know. We're going to have to... Judges? All right, we'll give it to you. There may be... I don't know if there's like a delay at all in our... In our <laughs> al although you did say tequila, Heineken... And uh -huh. the fireball thing. <laughs> yeah, I said fireball, <laughs> which is a which is a brand, and Heineken yeah. is a brand. So you, you went, said types of alcohol. Those are alcoholic alcohol beverages. The, yeah. That's what's true. In, what's, in, what's in fireball? It, well, it's a whiskey. There you go. 
Bam, right. whiskey. So, <laughs> <laughs> Heineken is a beer. It's a beer. So maybe tequila, beer, and whiskey could have been yeah. three alcoholic drinks. Okay, there right. you go. Right. I got it. I was no trying continuity. to say Jägermeister in that one. For some reason, I was like, you got to get that one out. And I'm like, I can't think of what it was. Well, when you started stumbling, I was like, what's he trying to think of? I was like, yugga, like, yugga, 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 fireball. I'm like, beer, whiskey, wine, I'm gin, tequila. A There's a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> casting a I was like, spell. why would I go Jägermeister? <laughs> Again, it's a very seconds. specific name. Yeah. Um, all right. <laughs> Love this. Okay, Doug. <laughs> You ready for the last one? Because Let's of your it. recent trip to San Francisco. Oh, fuck. This one is free. This one's a special one for you. List the three states that border California. Washington, Arizona, Nevada. <laughs> Oregon, Nevada, close. Arizona. So close. 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 You had it. You had the right. You were there. I mean, just close. Just like last time I got right. two, two of the three on the last one. You know, you had, you know what it was? It was mm. the Pacific Northwest Lexia is what you had. Mm -hmm. You flipped yeah. Oregon and Washington. So that's not yeah. a problem. It happens to a lot of people. A lot, a lot of guys experience that. Well yeah. done, Doug. Hey, thank you. Quick, quick thing I forgot to mention. Yes. I had my first soda in like three years on my little trip. Whoa. Yeah. What, uh, what, pro okay. So f a few questions. Number one, what kind of soda did you have? I had two different ones. I had a Diet Coke. Fucking gross. Disgusting. Okay. I barely finished it. I was like, well, this, this is awful. Why do people drink this? What was, this what, what was gross about it to you? Like, it what, tasted it, what way too sweet. Of, way like, too it sweet. made my stomach okay. feel awful. Okay. And then I had a Coke Zero, and I'm like, there we go. <laughs> That's, well, that was there's. your I forgot that was your drink I was like ooh this is like spicy and good and I'm like alright you know what I'm, I'm okay I, I can own this the difference between a Diet Coke and a Coke Zero like I just I don't know that I'd be able to tell the difference between the two if you can't That's, then we're never going to kiss again so just keep that in mind alright well then I'm just never going to admit that I can't so there we go that's what I like to hear uh, what was the, what was the circumstance under which you allowed yourself to do this? Uh, I was at an office that had a shitload of beverages for free. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. I was like, and snacks and everything. And I was like, you know what? I haven't had one of these. Everyone was so pumped because they had Gatorades and cans and they're like, oh, they're back in cans. Do you remember when these were in cans? We should take pictures. Oh my that. God. <laughs> I don't think I remember them being in cans ever. It was like a hot second. They were in cans and we were like, oh, you remember when? I'm like, yeah, right. I kind of do, you know, I guess. <laughs> Which everyone was geeking out over that. And then you were yeah. like, you know what? I'm going to give myself like, a little treat. I haven't had a soda in a while. You know? I've been three years good on pop and I got to do it. I was like, I got to try this again. Let me just see where this is at. And I was like, yeah. Diet Coke, gross. Yeah. Coke Zero, good. All right. Fair enough. Very good. Yes. Fair yes. enough. Doug, we used to get Doug for his birthday. We used to oh, get him man. a whole 12 pack of, of Coke Zero or, or Coke Zero you Cherry. You gave me, for my 30th birthday, you gave me 30 Coke Zeros. Yeah. And Doug <laughs> and drank them all. lasted 24 hours. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Doug was I a different man back then. I have a sickness. But also, you know what? All that, zero calories, you know? Zero it's calories. Good for, for you may as well drinks. eat a salad. May as well. Fuck you. Uh <laughs> Coke, Coke Justin, Zero, salad in a can. Uh, Justin, uh, what do you got to recommend this week? So I have, uh, at the uh, urging of someone at uh, my my nine to five uh, office, uh, they, for years, you and I have talked about this and I've like, ah, I've never, I haven't ever jumped through the franchise and someone guilted me into it enough that I was like, fine, I'll do it. And they gave me a deadline with which to watch this movie. And so it was Aliens the second in the French in the alien franchise. And they said, you need to watch it by September 30th. And I said, okay. And they, they put it on my calendar. They sent an invite out and it said, Justin watches aliens or else. And I was like, okay. I said, or else. And uh, I would like to report that I was ahead of the curve. All right. I beat the deadline. So thank okay. you. And so you're I welcome. I just need to send you a calendar invite for you to watch arcane. Is that how this works? It shit doesn't hurt. <laughs> I've given, <laughs> I've given away the secret. My Fuck. kryptonite. That's no. the one thing. It's like a genie. Like, I can't say no to when there's a calendar invite on the thing. I'm like, I have to Fuck, fucking do it's this. there. But I will say I'm very happy I got uh, through that because it was uh, it was a great movie. So, uh, mm -hmm. so I've seen Alien. I've seen Aliens. And then I went to watch Alien 3. And there's a reason I'm not recommending that one this week. So I would recommend yeah. Aliens, the second in the series. I thought it was very good. Um, 
you know, it was uh, yeah, it was a lot more horror-y, uh, a lot more action than the first one. The first one's very slow, but I think that's, you know, for good reason. It was a very, mm. uh, it drew out the Spooky. suspense. This one was like, we're going to throw you into the, the shit and like you're mm. you're in it now. And it was real, real action vibe to it, which I dug because I, guilty pleasure of mine is the the action movies of the 80s and 90s. They're, they're campy. Right. James but Cameron at his finest right They're there. fucking fun, right? Yeah. You know? So I would yeah. recommend if you've not, uh, spooky season is upon us. Jump into the Alien franchise. Check it out, specifically Alien and Aliens. Yeah. Doug, what do you got? Well, there's only one thing to do when you talk about Xenos, and that's to fight for the Emperor. Brothers, call to arms. You should check out Space Marine 2, available now on all your gaming platforms. Fight for the Emperor as the Ultra Marines. Take care of the Tyranids. Snuff out the heretics and take back what belongs to you. Space Marine 2 is the shit. In all seriousness, I really like that. I really like that game. It's really fun. Um, my computer can barely run it, but you can it really? Fun. Oh, that game is beefy for my game. I'm like, I'll really? start this and I'll be ready to play. I'll boot it up. I'll be ready to play in 10 minutes. Uh, it takes a while. Christ. Uh, but the, the campaign itself, single player is like five, six hours. It's not much, but the co-op is super fun. Okay. Uh, I've been playing it a lot with, uh, Eric from New York. Nice. You know, I've been playing it a ton. And uh, it's got really great progression. There's a bunch of different classes you can play as. There's a really good um, leveling up system. It encourages you uh, to go to harder difficulties. So you unlock more things to power up your character and your weapons and things like that. And uh, the challenge on it is I'm not big into like the Dark Souls games. Are you familiar with those at all? I've, I've heard of them. I'm not familiar with them. Though. They're incredibly difficult games. Um, and I don't like those because it's just it doesn't seem like I'm like, you know, my life's hard enough as it is. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to punch my my computer screen. Uh, but this is like has the right mo- amount of difficulty, and it feels good to be like a space marine, being the shit out of a bunch of tyrannid alien creatures uh, as you drive your power sword into them and then flip them up and slice them in half, and then watch all the other creatures dissipate because you've broken their synapse and now they're dead. It feels really good. That sounds fun so, to me. I'm yeah, not gonna it lie. Feels I good. Can, yeah. You get the heavy class. You got this giant fucking rail gun. You're like. <laughs> just shooting shit it's the fucking best man i love it you get a jump pack on you jump up in the air slam down oh it feels so good man it's great it's great i love it i love it you should also check it out it's great, it's great. It's good. all right we will stop pressuring us jesus it's good let's do it God. Uh, well thank you all for hanging out with us we appreciate you so much and you know all the love uh let us know in those comments you know what you think about everything we talked about if you've played space marine 2 tell me what do you like what's your build what are you going with how, how high a difficulty have you gotten yet? What's Doug's going, going to be very aggressive about this for the next few episodes. Know. Very uh, aggressive. And, uh, you know, just check us out, youtube.com slash mindgappodcast. Uh, hit the link in the description for links to our, uh, hit the description for links to our Discord, for our Patreon, for our merch. And, of course, follow us on all our social medias at mindgappodcast. And Justin is alive digitally. That's true. On Instagram, at Justin underscore Michael, spelled M-I-K-E-L. It's the fun way of spelling it. And while you're in the online realm, anywhere where you can uh, find audio versions of podcasts, like Doug said earlier, Spotify or Apple Podcasts or any of the other platforms, if you listen to audio podcasts, find us, subscribe, rate, review, like, share, all those things. The big one is sharing, though. Please let people know that we exist. It means the world to us, and it helps us grow and grow and grow and grow into a big space marine so that we can fight the Xeno, Xenoms. Xenos. That's exactly what I said. And Heresy! then TuiStateth.com, TuiStateth on all social media, and LoveAndImprovFilm.com, Love and Improv Film on Instagram. Done. And he gave me a nod without <laughs> ending that sentence with the right inflection. All right, gang, uh, with that, I will say, <laughs> Justin, thank you. Douglas, thank you. Listeners, viewers, thank you, and you all have a dandy fucking week. Mind Gap Podcast.